Hello guys, I welcome all of you to today's farmcast and today as well we'll discuss five drugs of choice, one anti-cancer drug and a couple of questions asked by the students, right? So let us straight away begin with uh, our first disorder for today and that is diabetes mellitus. So guys, for treatment of diabetes mellitus, if it is type 1 diabetes mellitus, all of you know insulin is the drug of choice and we combine one short acting and one intermediate or long acting insulin to make a regimen. Now remember, apart from insulin, there are only few drugs which are approved for type 1 and in fact one that is pramlinitide. So all of you know it is an amylin analog which is also approved for treatment of type 1 diabetes mellitus and it is approved for treatment of postprandial hyperglycemia. So is a common question they ask you which drug can be used both in type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus one answer can be insulin but obvious reasons they don't give it in your options so what they give actually is pramlinitide which can be used in type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus it is approved for both whereas alpha glucosidase inhibitors they are approved only for type 2 uh, diabetes mellitus like acarbose voglibose they are sometimes used in type 1 but they are not FDA approved for type 1 diabetes mellitus right now coming to type 2 diabetes mellitus guys the drug of choice is metformin metformin is the drug of choice for type 2 diabetes mellitus both treatment and prophylaxis a lot of times i get doubts from students as to what do you mean by prophylaxis of diabetes mellitus guys it's obviously these are patients who are at high risk of diabetes like for example uh, patients who are morbidly obese right and though they don't fall into the definition of diabetes mellitus but they are at high risk of diabetes mellitus so prophylactically you can use uh, there right guys so this is treatment of diabetes mellitus now moving on to the second disorder diabetic ketoacidosis now you know most of you will know the answer it is insulin but what they can ask you which which, which insulin is preferred now first of all think diabetic ketoacidosis it is an emergency situation which means the insulin that i'm supposed to use here should be by which route subcutaneous or intravenous obviously intravenous so which are the only insulins given by intravenous route there are two of them one is regular insulin and another one is aspart but aspart is much much costlier and does not give any advantage to regular insulin by intravenous route right not subcutaneous intravenous that is why regular insulin is the drug of choice for diabetic ketoacidosis even for hyperkalemia the insulin preferred is regular insulin now guys moving on to the third disorder that is digoxin toxicity digoxin is a drug guys they love to ask they love to ask and if you look at my hd series i have given you one page in that hd series where everything important related to digoxin i have combined in one page right guys so there i have mentioned that for digoxin toxicity the antidote is anti digoxin antibody called as dg band dg band is the drug of choice for digoxin toxicity whereas for arrhythmia like tachyarrhythmia that can be seen like ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation the anti arrhythmic of choice is is which one is it guys think it is lidocaine now in case the patient does not respond to lidocaine then what am i gonna use think guys think what they can also ask you this what can be used if the patient does not respond to lidocaine or in case they do not give lidocaine in the options what would be your better answer guys your better answer would be the mother of all antiarrhythmic drugs yes is amiodarone right in case the patient develops bradyarrhythmia or conduction block av block due to digoxin then i'll be using which drug atropine right guys so as you know digoxin is a drug which can cause any kind of arrhythmia tachyarrhythmia bradyarrhythmia and we have discussed this in my lectures the mechanism by which it can cause both tachy and bradyarrhythmia now guys moving on to our fourth disorder for today it is uh, diphtheria now diphtheria guys it has been asked many times and uh, diphtheria the drug of choice i hope all of you know the drug of choice is erythromycin now in case erythromycin is not in the option can you think of any other antibiotic that can be used in place of erythromycin it is penicillin guys 
we can use penicillin long acting penicillins like penicillin g or i mean benzathione penicillin g or procaine penicillin g these can be used in diphtheria as alternatives right so remember erythromycin as far as use is concerned they ask you only two disorders one is diphtheria second one is pertussis now guys coming to the last disorder for today um that is d latum or diphyllobothrium latum right so for d latum guys what is the drug of choice which anti helminthic drug is drug of choice is it albendazole or is it praziquantel what do you think is it it is praziquantel guys praziquantel and as you have are i had asked me to discuss some mechanism of action so it is a drug praziquantel is a drug whose mechanism of action is very important so what i'll ask you is what do you think which type of paralysis is caused by diphyllobothrium latum guys is it flaccid paralysis or is it spastic paralysis what do you think guys praziquantel it increases calcium influx into the helminths and that calcium will obviously cause which type of paralysis spastic paralysis guys right so spastic paralysis that, that's important here now guys as uh, you guys had requested me to cover one at least one anti cancer drug and that one anti cancer drug that I'll discuss today is uh, bleomycin so i'm not discussing all the drugs i'm discussing where i should put my money on means drugs which have high probability of being asked in our exams and that is what they had been doing for many years so bleomycin is a drug so i have already discussed cyclophosphamide i phosphamide and cesplatin in my previous uh, farm cast today we'll discuss bleomycin it is an anti tumor antibiotic uses of this drug guys there are two uses of bleomycin one is testicular cancer where it is used in a regimen called as bep b e p bep bleomycin etoposide platinum compound cisplatin that is called as bep regimen it is also used in hodgkins lymphoma in a regimen called as a b v d a for adriamycin adriamycin is the other name for doxorubicin b for bleomycin v for vinblastin d for dacarbazin so uses they had never been asked i'll be frank with you they had never been asked what they had asked you for many many times guys repetitively they have asked regarding side effect so side effect of bleomycin if they ask you what is the reason why they cause uh, these specific side effects the reason is very simple they induce free radical damage so this free radical damage is mostly seen in two organs that is lungs and skin why because bleomycin is metabolized by an enzyme called as bleomycin hydrolase which god was not in a mood to give us in lungs and skin right that is why bleomycin is not aggressively metabolized in lungs and skin so it it is in active form and produces more free radicals in lungs and skin so what these free radicals do they damage the type 1 pneumocyte type 1 remember they ask you which type type 1 and that causes pulmonary fibrosis skin they cause flagellate dermatitis it was recently asked in aims exam and if you remember in my lectures what i draw this flagellate dermatitis i'll, I'll draw a back of the person and i will uh, draw their longitudinal streaks of pigmentation so it seems as if someone has hit someone on the back with a hunter right someone with a hunter this is what i tell you guys and that is what exactly they gave in the exam a picture of a back of a person with this longitudinal pigmentation and that is nothing but that is flagellate dermatitis so these are two things you need to remember guys with bleomycin and now coming to we have guys uh, come to the last part of farm cars where, where i discuss few questions concerns of you guys related to the preparation and now coming to this couple of questions asked by a few students um and two questions which are quite similar in nature how to minimize silly mistakes in grand test and how to judiciously manage time in grand test so these are you know intertwined so they are related to each other now guys uh, i have planned a live youtube session on regarding to grand test specifically for those students who are depressed because their score isn't rising right despite of uh, many grand tests they have given many grand tests they have studied many subject still the gt is not rising and they are not getting that positive reinforcement from grand test via score so I, i i will do a live session soon guys within one to two weeks now but nevertheless i'll still discuss few points here in the farm cast 
so guys there are many purpose of grand test right and one of them is to learn time management and to improve from one grand test to another as you cruise through it and that is why i always stress that you should start giving grand test from the very first day of your preparation the reason being the few grand test that you give you 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 will lose those grand test in adapting yourself to these grand test to make a strategy how to appear the grand test how to manage your time so that practice will eat away your two to three grand test or four grand test so that is why students who start early right they are more you know acquainted with these grand test second see both silly mistakes and time management these two things they will improve drastically after the first revision so if you if you have not even started your revision there is no point in blaming yourself right it is it is a basic tendency of human brain we we study we forget we study we forget we study we forget now that is what happens in preparation but at the end when you begin to revise everything put everything in one place that is when you will begin to recall things and you will see that uh, when you are uh, why silly mistakes happen in grand test because most of the times you are confused in between two two options and for the more number of questions you are confused in between two options that shows that there is a significant lack of revision means you have not yet started revision so there is no point in blaming yourself right so what you need to do is you need to wait for your first revision to over and i can guarantee you guys your score will drastically begin to change after that right though you would be nervous about it that your score is not improving and i understand it is basic human tendency and psychology but don't blame yourself you are on the right track believe me you are on the right track i have been through this and in fact um see in our times in all india pg there was no need pg there was ai pg and even to be qualified you had to score minimum of 50% so before i um, completed my first revision i was not even able to get uh, 50% in those grand tests so i used to get depressed but i realized that when i completed my first revision and the next grand test i was above i was above 50% and forget about rank i was nowhere uh, getting a rank I, because I, i was not even able to cross 50% so i i you know i went through my first revision i was above 50% 53 54% i was getting then i was through my second revision now i started getting rank i i got the rank of all india rank of under 1000 it was somewhere around 500 to 700 rank and that happened that happened after second revision are you getting my point so before my first revision i was not even getting 50% does that mean i am a bad student does that mean i am not studying well no it just means that i have not given sufficient time to revision i have i have yet barely finished my course so when i give time to revision i revise for the first time i revise for the second time and i will tend to get better with each revision that is why i say you need to revise at least 3 times right guys so give yourself time you will get there slowly and gradually meanwhile don't punish yourself don't scrutinize yourself harshly right you are still on the right track you are the same student and you will see that if you have studied honestly you will get there with time right guys so uh, those were two questions asked by few students and there is another third question asked by one student but uh, today i am out of time i don't want to prolong it so this question another question is also important that is how to deal with depression during preparation and this is a fairly important question guys and uh, i'll cover this question um 100% guys i'll cover it but i'll cover in tomorrow's farmcast because today's farmcast i've already crossed the limit of time so that's all for today guys and uh, if you have any concern any doubt related to your preparation you can let me know in the comment box i'll always try to incorporate your doubts in my upcoming farmcast so that's all for today guys take care bye bye this was dr ranjan with you